Hey guys, welcome back to Starcastic Remarks, and my name is Ryan, and you are listening to the series of episodes that we've been going through this whole offseason called Stars Fan Stories. Before we get into today's guest, please go and use the promo code THPN. Next time you use DraftKings Sportsbook, they're our sponsor for this podcast, this episode, and all of THPN. We appreciate them and what they allow us to do, you, you know, they allow us to do uh, cool things like this, and uh, you know, we just really appreciate them. So go and use their service uh, next time. Next time you want to bet, there's a lot of fun things to bet on, especially right now. There's some other things going on. So, anyways, we're gonna get into uh, today's episode, uh, and I have had to practice your name a couple of times because because uh, this is this is legit because this is so awesome. He reached out. Uh, we have a we have a, a friend of the show. He's from Slovakia, and and make sure I pronounce this right. He's you're outside of Bratislava, is that right? Yeah, that's right. He's outside of Bratislava, and his name is Uri. And if that doesn't sound familiar, he shares the same name as the number one overall pick from this past NHL draft. So, uh, Uri, how you doing? Yeah, hi Ryan. It's, I'm actually doing pretty good. Uh, it's already almost midnight in here and here in Slovakia but uh looking forward to chat with you about all things stars so we're really having a great time right now yeah and and what's really cool is that we've had to we had to do a little bit of a uh, special stuff here because there is a seven hour difference between uh you and then where I live here in the, the central time zone in the United States so I, so he it's, it's currently what little after 10 over little there after 10 yeah 10 little p.m after 10. it's getting close yeah. to midnight and actually, it's, it's, and it's just yeah, it's okay. it, 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 it's actually better for me like do it do it at this time because like it's 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 peaceful out there. It's it's totally quiet. My daughter is already asleep, so yeah, I, I can go on and on. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. All right, uh, can you, so can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Uh, you know, just just like your background, what you do, you know, family, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. I, I don't want to bore people like too much, but. Uh, yeah, almost, th- almost, I'm almost, almost thirty. Uh, actually, uh, I was born the same year as the stars were like moved from Minnesota to Dallas. So, yeah, that's that's what we shared together. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I'm I'm a I'm a managing director of uh, of a fintech hub uh, that's basically uh, some sort of an accelerator or incubator for for startups in financial industry. I'm leading the thing in Slovakia and also in the Czech Republic. Uh, I'm I'm happily married. I have a one beautiful daughter that's almost two years old but uh she wakes up way too early and that's a great thing for me because <laughs> we can watch some stars game from here and there so so that's great <laughs> yeah so so typically and you told me about this but i want people to understand like how serious of a stars fan you are so if a game starts here in the evening times what time do you have to be awake at in order to watch this game live yeah, you, like usually the game is scheduled to start at two thirty a.m. in the morning, like uh, the let's say Bratislava time. Uh, it's actually start like two forty or two forty five. Yeah, that's that's kind of a thing. Uh, but uh, I have some sort of like internal clock inside of me, like during the night when the stars are playing the game, that I wo- I, I wake up like multiple times, like just maybe just checking the score. And uh, sometimes, if the score is interesting enough, I I make myself uh, go out of the bed and like uh, start the stream and start watching a little, a little bit. And uh, I don't want to say I like uh, like I watched every game. That's surely that that's that's almost impossible with the time difference. But mm-hmm. like I, I like every morning I catch up with all the highlights from the game. That's for sure. Uh, I watch like 15, maybe to 20 live games, and I definitely enjoy when they play like afternoon game in Dallas because it's like prime time here in Europe. So, yeah. Uh, but I can say that uh, every every night where the stars play, I sleep uh, a bit less than than the other <laughs> than the other nights when they don't when they don't play. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, stars fans who complain about you know the. The nine o'clock, the nine thirty start oh, times it. when it's on the just, Pacific just, Coast. Yeah, guys, exactly. Just, 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 just stop. Just stop. It. Yeah, yeah, it's like you got stop. nothing yeah. on your eye. Nothing. I I, re- I remember the time when we were in Pacific Division and the people were complaining and everything. But guys, really, <laughs> <laughs> things could be things could be much worse. Trust me. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I, I I just wanted to point that out because I'm just like sometimes I we I think we complained about like during the Calgary series like. 
with all the nine and nine thirty start times, and we're just in like e- even like here in the Central Time Zone, the the game started at like eight or eight thirty because. You know, I mean, uh, for, for me, it, yeah, for me, it was great because the game started like 4 and a.m. in the morning and the sun was already like rising. Uh, sometimes my daughter was waking me up at like 430, maybe at five. So, yeah, we just went along play and then I either I put the game in my AirPods or just watched it with her. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, she already like knows what's ho- what, what hockey is. When, and when she sees the logo uh, the, of the Dallas Stars, like the current one, she already knows that what what kind of thing that the daddy is watching. So <laughs> <laughs> smart girl, smart yeah, girl. Yeah, and also like her name is uh, Dorota, which is like Dorothy in English, and the D she likes the the letter D, and like uh, yeah, that's 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 just a bonus that the letter D is in the logo. <laughs> <laughs> well, t- tell me a little bit about uh, like how you how you got into hockey because and and especially the Dallas Stars because you're a fan of the Dallas Stars. And I, I think it's fantastic that you're, you know, halfway across the globe and you're a fan of a team that's in in the south in Texas. How, how did that get started for you? Yeah, the factor that is it that is in the south, like that didn't really that didn't really matter to me. Uh, I think it, it, it started like back back in the day, back maybe late 90s uh, when we were just little kids playing street hockey. Uh, on the street and everybody had like their own player there was like uh, Martin Brodor there was like Yaramir Jagr there was Miroslav Shatan like Buffalo was big at that time Devils Penguins there was Steve Eiserman Joe Sakic and you name it and uh, I kind of like had to like pick my own stuff I didn't want to like repeat after after somebody else and you know we had like those sticker albums that we like bought stickers and uh, stick it into the album and for every NHL team there was like logo and players and uh, we like we kind of like bought it uh, like every morning when we went to the school and uh since I saw the stars logo I like immediately liked it for some reason and then I like learned a little bit about the team and I uh, I learned about there's like a guy named Mike Modano which I immediately fell, fell in love with, with the name. So I was Mike Modano from that point on when we played street hockey. And then I was, I think it was like 2002, 2003 season uh, when Marty Turkle had like this big breakout season. And there, there was a big feature on him in, in, a, in a magazine focusing on hockey and here in, here in Slovakia and also like Czech Republic because we, say, we speak almost the same language, Czech Republic mm-hmm. and Slovakia. And uh, there was a big feature about him and his mask. So, and I was like, "Yeah, that's my team, and that's my goalie." So, since then, I was I was pretty much hooked. And also, this was like my first game, like first PC game, NHL 2003, I think, where there was Marty Turkle and Ron Tagnat as as a goalie Tagnat the tandem for for the Stars. Yeah. So since then, I I, I was hooked hooked uh, pretty much. So why do you continue to go back to the stars? Is it just because you know that's just the first team you kind of identified with when you were younger? Yeah, basically. I mean, that's it's strange how those things work. Like uh, we were discussing, like my two favorite teams is uh, Dallas Stars and the Manchester United in soccer, and both of them like uh, won their big thing in 1999. The Stars won the Stanley Cup, and then the United won the Champions League. Uh, and maybe it's a subconscious thing that you are like what six, seven years old, and you see this team winning, and like your 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 mind is 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 making up these things like oh this is a good team, so I can maybe follow them. Uh, but uh, I I like the team, man. I really I really fo- uh, like followed their matches. I didn't watch it that time, but I like uh, followed every result like each each and every morning. And I remember there's those were pretty good stars team like from two thousand and two three up until the lockout and ma- and even after the lockout like uh, i followed like uh uc okinan's shootout moves and there was like so many things that i like i like the the modano lectin and zubo trio uh which then basically turned out to be tyler Sagan, jamie ben and john klingberg trio mm-hmm. so so yeah m- maybe in between i have to say that uh Maybe in between 2009, 2010, and 2013, I had a little bit of pause following the stars. Uh, but ever since they changed the jerseys to the to the to victory green, and the Jamie Ben had his Arthros 
trophy season, I was pretty much dialed, uh, pretty much dialed back in. So, and everything like peaked at that great 2015-16 season when, uh, yeah, my girlfriend at the time was just studying in, in Paris. So I had like all nights to myself and I <laughs> just me, maybe work. And I was, I think I was finishing university that year. And uh, yeah, just, just watching how great hockey stars played that time. So ever since then, I was, I was pretty much a diehard fan. Yeah. Well, and, and no one blames you at all for, for that period of time. Cause, and I'll be honest, you know, as a, as a guy who hosts a stars podcast, I was very similar like that uh, at that period of time, just because, I mean, that's when the stars were bankrupt, uh, exactly. you know, and this was, you know, before Tom also, Gilardi. Also the Jersey were awful at that time. Yeah, the, the, in my yeah, opinion. The, <laughs> oh, I, I thought I had it up here, but I don't, it was that old, it, it looked like a college Jersey. It was like the it Dallas. Looked, across yeah, it. yeah. It looked like a college Jersey and it really, for me, uh, I need to be like wired both with the management team, with, with, with the steps that they are doing with the players. I had to like, but also I have to like jerseys and um, I, I didn't thought about that that time, but uh, coming back, yeah, maybe maybe the jerseys were were the thing that sucked the life of, of the fan <laughs> out of me a little bit. Yeah, so uh, and also like they, they they were pretty bad that time. So, but well, they it, were... it, it was just it was just like black and white with a little bit of yeah. gold. So they got away from the green. I mean, like look at this. Like yeah, I mean all the green. I, I'm sorry for those of you that are listening on the podcast. I have got. Two Dallas Stars jerseys behind me. They're both victory green. So sorry. I, I guess I yeah. shouldn't have just done that without explaining. What For I'm those who doing. like didn't watch Stars, like just go and Google it. It's it's pretty atrocious. I mean, even Mooders is 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 way nicer than than than, oh. than that jersey. <laughs> I am praying and keeping my fingers crossed. That for they're bringing back the reverse retro program. So the ones that brought, uh, I love the reverse retro. It, it it took me a while to get used to it. The the white one, the really it was like yeah, blinding white. But it it took a while to get used to it. But I liked it, and I'm hoping that with them bringing back the program this upcoming season, that they'll do something with the Mooters. I know they're not going to because it's the worst logo ever in the history of professional sports but... wouldn't it be wouldn't it be fun though like uh, oh it would be it so would much be fun. so great like i had i had seen like the concept on twitter there was like mooter's logo with the victory green and and it was like this gradient from green from green to, to black it was just perfect like it was so fun but it was like so courageous and i i don't think the the ownership and the management group would be that <laughs> courageous uh yeah the white reverse retros they like they they really had, had to grow on me uh i didn't like the all white i, I have to be honest but uh, the, the, the jersey itself uh i heard that it's it's way nicer like uh when you when you have it like hands-on not just when you watch it uh yeah. just a small glimpse is like if you maybe if they maybe add a little bit of green at the bottom side of the jersey, it will be. I think it will be 100% great. But mm -hmm. uh, you have in your background like a winter classic jersey, which is yep. for for me the the logo and the colors. It was like it is. It's it, it's the best jersey the stars have ever had. For in in my opinion. And uh, th this jersey specifically, um, there used to be a team a long time ago. I don't think they played in any kind of super top league, but. I think they were in the SPHL at this point, uh, Southern Professional Hockey League, and they were called the Dallas Texans. Yeah. And and instead of saying uh, stars like it does right here, it just said Texans, and it had uh, I think it had the star as well. No, I'm not positive. Don't don't quote me on that. But it had the it was the exact same same design. It had a D, and it just said yeah. Texans across. I, I I think stars like in their video. I think they 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 they, they put some glimpses uh, with mm -hmm. with, the, with Texans jersey, and it could be because the X. Uh, looks like a little bit of the stars in, 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 in like like in the middle so yeah definitely maybe that's what it was yeah yeah i i think it was but this uh current version i think it really rocks it's it's really great jersey so and also the blackout one like i i like the blackout as well so yeah got, i, I mean, got the blackout one right behind me sitting on my chair so <laughs> yeah the blackout one is it's it's pretty cool it's it's different it's modern i i i really like it so we are pretty we are pretty like lucky with the jerseys the stars mm. have like it could be much worse <laughs> yeah it, it could be and i mean it, the one thing i do like about the stars is that they weren't afraid to like change the jerseys or anything like that so 
it's not like the Philadelphia Flyers. You know, yeah. no offense to Flyers jerseys. You have a great logo. You really do. You have a great logo, but it, 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 it there's not really much change when you. Oh, there's a new jersey out. It, it, it's not that much yes. different. Some people, some people say that the current logo of the Stars is a little bit bland, and yeah, I disagree. The, yeah, I disagree. I disagree. But 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 I get where they're coming from. Like the okay. the old one was 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 a classic, but it wasn't the Dallas Stars logo. It was Minnesota North Stars mm-hmm. logo, basically. Right. Uh, and I'm just I just have to say I'm so happy they didn't went to the color change because I I know that at some point they were considering changing the colors to to white, blue, and red. Yep. I remember so uh, I I I don't know who stopped it. Uh, maybe it was the Razor Ray or m- maybe <laughs> because I I heard I heard him saying it on on a podcast with stars have that yeah what's the like unique color that nobody has like it's victory green so we should be that the Dallas was always green so let's stick with it and that's probably the best de- the best decision that they could make at that oh point. yeah totally one hundred percent. Um, well, okay. Well, let me, let me ask you about this too. So what, uh, what specifically, uh, like, do you like about hockey? Is it like the speed of it? Is it the players? Is it just, you know, just the general atmosphere? I mean, what do you specifically like about hockey and why does it stick to you? Yeah. Hockey in, in Slovakia, it's, it's maybe the sport number one, maybe, maybe two after, 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 after football, uh, you guys call it soccer over Mm -hmm. there, but, uh, it's football. It's not soccer. It's uh, football. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, I like like the speed of it and everything. Uh, but the more I think about it, I like the let's say maybe business side of it even more than than actual actual hockey itself. Like I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty open and deep into the analytics. I I like uh, I like uh, like measure measure stuff. I like the business side of it. I like the cap world. To be quite honest with you, I, I I like the projections. Maybe maybe that's coming from my business background. That I'm a I have a degree in economics and also like management. And I I like uh, to play a little armchair GM and and try to move things, try to trade guys, maybe try to build the rosters one, two, three, four years uh, further down the line. I think I also like uh, when writing one of my articles, uh, I, I I was focusing on that. So I like the business side of things, like in the NHL. But of course, yeah, I, I love watching hockey, the speed of it, like, and uh, I'm pretty keen on goalies. I have to say, like, I like uh, when the when when the game is like two one. I don't like those eight six games that were happening in playoffs this year. Maybe I'm a, <laughs> maybe I'm in the minority. For sure, I'm in the minority right here. But uh, I really like when the when the, when the game has its speed, the tempo, but where the goalies are heroes as well. Like, I don't want the goalies to be like. Some some sort of a some sort of a poor guys just picking picks picking picking pucks like uh, from the from the net. Yeah, I I like when the game is like three two, four two, but I have to say I'm was not uh, I I was not like on, on the board with the, the style of hockey that the stars played <laughs> because that, that's that's what basically the styles the style of hockey that they played last couple of years and I really did not like it. I have to say. <laughs> I, I think it'll get better. I think it's going to get a little bit better. But here, l- let me let me throw you a bone about this because, and this was in the back of my head while you were talking about the cap world. Because uh, at the time of this recording, it's uh, July sixteenth of twenty twenty two. We just had free agency, so we just signed uh, Mr. Mason Marchment was a good signing. Colin Miller was a pretty good signing too, and uh, the Stars have about uh, you know roughly. 12 to 13 million dollars in cap space and the reason why they haven't made another move is because they have to re-sign uh jay gottinger and jason robertson so they're they're not projected to make any kind of other move other than those two signing those two, getting those two guys signed um do you and a lot of people have been asking me this question they've been just uh, asking me on twitter about it but do you think there's any possibility that the stars can make some room for John Klingberg to return back to Dallas. Cause at this point it doesn't look like it. What is, is it possible uh, with your knowledge of the cap? What do you think? Yeah, that's a great question. I mean, maybe when this podcast is out, John Klingberg has already signed somewhere else, but right. uh, bear in mind guys, for those who are listening, uh, it's, I think what day three or day four, the free agency, John Klingberg, four. 
yeah, it's fourth. And John Klingber and also like other big guys like Nazem Kadri and others are not still signed and that's because the flat cap basically but mm -hmm. and we've we've been we've been uh, hearing from jim neil and and company that because of the flat cap we can't basically we can't afford uh john klingberg and like honestly that's just not true i mean i i i, I don't buy just one bit because uh you see that th there are trades happening all the time uh right now as before this recording there was like uh john marino and Jeff Petrie trade uh, that, that that just break and uh, uh, you can definitely move some some guys to make room like don't kid ourselves. I mm -hmm. made a video about this like on my on my Twitter feed I think yesterday. Like you guys can make moves. There are some contracts that could be moved basically just to create space for John Klingberg. Let's assume that we have like twelve million dollars in 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 cap and. Uh, I've been projecting both Jason Robertson and Jake Ottinger to sign bridge deals. And I, I, I'll tell you why. Because in three years' time... Uh, the cap's going to skyrocket. The cap's going to skyrocket, maybe uh, maybe to, to the mid-90s. And, and, yep. and uh, mm -hmm. that's just... But that's just one thing. The second thing is Jamie Benn's contract is up in three years. Essa Lindell's contract is up in three years. Ryan Suter contract is up in three years, even though he will be bought out in before that. That's I'm 100 percent sure that he will be bought, bought out maybe 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 next summer, and then maybe I, I can explain why I think so. And also, Radek Faxa's contract will be up in three years. Like that's almost I think it's, I, I I didn't do the math in my head, but it's more than 20 millions uh, million dollars in cap space. So you have all this time and all this space. Then to project uh, Jason Robertson for big, big long-term contract in in the summer of twenty-five, and also Jack Attinger. For for now, you really have to be cap compliant, and you have some albatross contracts that you have to work with. And to create a room with, for John Klingberg, uh, you really have to think about only those three years. And uh, for those three years, I mean, you can do one or two things. One is definitely move Anton Hudobin's contract because. Uh, mm -hmm. He is basically a non-factor right now, and even I would be so happy if we return like healthy in the preseason. But uh, even if he's healthy, he's either number two or number three guy on the on the depth chart. And if he's number three, he's pretty pretty. It's a lot for a number three. It's pretty pretty lot for a number three. Yeah, and yes, you need to pay somebody. To take you to, to take him off of of your let's say cap, and uh, Jim Neal has been pretty averse to paying somebody to maybe help him with 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 the cap, and that's that's the main issue I had with him. That sometimes really you, you really gotta give to get, and uh, you really have to maybe send maybe th maybe second and maybe third round pick for somebody to take Anton Hudobin contract, and that just that, that will clear. 2.2 million uh, in cap space, and uh, because he's buried in NHL in, in AHL, so right, right, and uh, yeah, you, somebody can say yeah, that's only 2.2 million, but uh, there are other contracts that you can definitely either move out or buy out. I mentioned Ryan Suter, the buyout will save you save you 2.6 million this season, and then 2.9 2.9 million in the coming two. And then when the when 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 the cap skyrockets, uh, you would have to pay like 1.4. For the next three seasons but yeah let's be realistic and let's just, let's just think about the hockey trade and i always believe that somebody would take a flyer let's say on radek faxa because he's a big body center he's what 20 28 years old he has three years left on his deal at moderate at moderate rate at 3.25 so if you combine those two uh you can you recoup some assets like six round pick for radek faxa whatever just to just just to give the, give him somebody let's say to anaheim who has who has plenty of cap space and poof like that you have like 5.7 million uh, extra for john klingberg who i have to say it doesn't look like he will sign like for the big ticket deal that yeah. he was he was supposed to yeah and, and it... i've heard i've heard some rumblings man that uh that he is willing to sign like shorter term, and that was like three the other deal. thing, three year deal, man. And yeah. that was that it, was the it thing. It opens like, it up, right? It opens it up, and the stars didn't want to give out term. And listen, if they signed him last summer to eight times eight deal, 
it would be rough. It would, it would be probably a bad deal looking at the market right now. But if they, if if only they are still open to to having him on the team, this is probably the best poker game I've ever seen somebody <laughs> play because, I mean, they've dragged him for so long and a poor guy, he's getting married in a couple of weeks and I really like him, like, personally. I really like that. I really like his attitude and he was really the the core of the team and yeah he's he's a bit uh he's a bit of like consequence of uh tom galliardi paying for jamie ben and tyler Sagan. and i think that's the point with 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 the uh, with the owner tom galliardi that he probably doesn't want to pay klingberg like i think on a personal level because he is not happy where the money went and how the money was spent on ben and Sagan. and nobody can blame him but at that time those contracts were were okay, man. The, the, the contracts were okay. So uh, for John Klingberg, I see an avenue coming back to Dallas, but it would require some shrewd move from Jim Neal. And honestly, I just feel like they have closed the door at that at, at this point, uh, especially when they sign Colin Miller, who is, mm-hmm. who, is yeah. who, who is who is pretty good guy. Uh, he could probably play even on the second pairing role as we speak. If he's healthy, and he takes like almost two million uh, in 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 a cap, but uh, yeah, right now I'm not overly optimistic about the current D group of the stars, and uh, having Klingberg on, I would be optimistic, especially with Pete De Boer and his playoff style. So yeah, yeah, and I, I think they're really betting on two players in particular when when you look at the the stars D core and everything you said, I I completely agree with you could. You could definitely move out Fox and Dobby, and that would be the easiest way to possibly uh, re-sign Klingberg. I, I don't even know if he signs for for that much, though. Five million for three years? I don't know if that would get it done. And Listen, uh, I, I was thinking, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Uh, uh, when Kevin Shattenkirk was weak UFA, uh, mm-hmm. I think it was like 2017. Everybody was uh, was speaking like what what a big contract he will sign. He signed at like four years. Six point something for for New York Rangers, and he signed totally under his value. Also, the story he he got mm-hmm. bought out at, at, during the time of the deal. But yeah, I see something something similar happening to John Klingberg. Unfortunately for the guy, but yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I I just don't see it happening. But uh, the two players they're betting on are Hawk and Paw, which he's gonna have to play in the top four, if you ask me, in my opinion. And uh, they're also betting on Thomas Harley a little bit too, because as it, it let's assume Suter stays, as Suter is getting older, he's going to regress, and Harley is probably going to have to take a, a role in that top four. So that it that's a I mean that's a risk you have to take because of the player you signed in Mason Marchment, and that's where a majority of your open cap space went to was to that guy. But they they needed somebody to score goals, and he looks like a guy that can score goals. Yeah, I mean, so. I was happy I was happy when I saw the Marchment signing. That was. Pretty much unexpected uh, from the Jim Neal. It's not typical Jim Neal signing because he's he's I was he's, ecstatic. Yeah, I was he, ecstatic. He's only twenty seven. He's on the up, uh, and just that's one thing. I think they are totally betting on Thomas Harley. Uh, they are also, I think, betting on Miro Heiskanen like to really step up and not play maybe twenty five minutes, but really play thirty minutes a game because probably. Because he will probably have to do that, like looking at the, at the and he will be playing on the right side uh, right now as we speak, because uh, on the left it's just so full. There is Esa Lindell, there is there is uh, Thomas Harley, and there is also Ryan Sutter, who is what thirty seven right now, and I really cannot see him higher than the third pair. So Miro has Miro right now has to play on the right side with Colin Miller and Yanni Hakampa. If you think like this D group uh, with Joel Hanley as your seventh defender is not bad. But I think it's mediocre. Yeah, and, that's that's exactly how I described it too. I agree with you. And and that's that's the point. I mean, yeah, they can definitely like uh, be lifted by play of Miro Heiskanen, and maybe Thomas Harley takes takes the next step. But man, did you really have to sign Ryan Suter last summer uh, to, <laughs> to take up almost four million of your cap space? Who could, which could right now be going to John Klingberg, and at that point you could, you would have Harley Klingberg Heiskanen. And uh, probably somebody, maybe like Colin Miller in your mm-hmm. top four. And uh, then you could have uh, Ian ha- Yanni Hakampa is your ideal third pair in D. And um, even Joe Hanley could be could be playing at that spot, at, at like number six. 
instead of Ryan Suter. But yeah, for some reason, they felt the big urge to replace Jamie Oleksiak. Uh, but they didn't feel the same urge with John Klingberg, which which was which was pretty sad for me. Yeah. Well, I hope he get, I hope he gets paid. He deserves to get paid. And in all of this, I know a lot of people were upset that he left and he went to free agency. And I was just like, you can't blame the guy. He he took a team friendly deal with his first major contract, signed for seven years, four point two five million. He deserves to go out and look and see what he can get paid. Yeah, he and totally listen, deserves that. And he did not want to do this. Let's remember, he did not yeah, want to, to enter to free Dallas. agency. He, that's what breaks my heart because he was really heart and soul of that team and he did not really want to enter free agency like which player at at his level does not want to like enter free agency look at johnny goodrow for example and i he wanted to be a star yeah they they could not agree on a number but uh i really wanted to see like more initiative from the stars management group to to try to keep john klingberg in dallas because uh, he deserves it. He's he could be star for a life, and he maybe he could have his like uh, jersey raised in in the rafters if they manage to win a Stanley Cup or maybe two <laughs> in the coming mm-hmm. years. Definitely with Jamie mm-hmm. Ben, uh, who will be going to the rafters, and possibly Tyro Sagan. And I think yeah, that, there too. that's what breaks my heart because he was really like the the old core, but he's he's not that old, and I would really. I would argue that he's the best out of the three guys, especially right now. So it's pretty, it's pretty shameful. But I mean, I'm still have my fingers crossed that Jim Neal maybe suddenly wakes up in the morning and trade uh, Anton Hudobin and trade Radek Faxa to make room for John Klingberg and really just to maybe just to sign him for a three-year deal or whatever, just to be here because I know he's had his second child on the way. And he wants stability, so I totally get that. Uh, there is way. I, I heard that also teammates were like pitching in for John to stay, and uh, I think everything was like laid out for him to stay. And then you just need to pull the trigger. So maybe trade somebody out, and uh, yeah, maybe 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 buy it a little bit in the in the AAV or maybe in the term. But uh, yeah, that's really bad asset management to let him walk for nothing, especially if he signs a short term deal. Let's say to with with Adava. That would be mm-hmm. that would be pretty bad for the stars ownership. Yeah, well, uh, let's go ahead and get into uh, uh, some of your some of your favorite players because since we're kind of talking about players a little bit, so you're kind of yeah, let's, like be, let's be let's be let's let's be more optimistic. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, you've been fortunate enough to where you've kind of followed the stars for a pretty long time. Um, and, and, you know, most there, there's some stars fans who I've talked to who are mostly, you know, they've only been watching them for a couple of years. So maybe they only have a range of 2019 to now. And then there's some stars fans like uh, Matt Day, who I talked to in our first episode, who has been with the team since the beginning. He remind me of Shane Churla. I forgot about Shane Churla from way back then. Yeah, um, he's, a le- he's a legend. I mean, he attended his uh, 1000th game this year, right? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Matt Day did. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know about but, the guy. Uh, what are some of your uh, favorite players from either past stars eras or current stars eras? Current stars players. Sorry. Yeah. So let's. Uh, we we can go also like the past and uh, let's just say that I uh, first of all I love I loved really Mike Modano and those big guys like Marty Turkle as I as I mentioned earlier. But maybe let's focus on some of the fringe or niche guys to make this a little bit more interesting. So I really loved Nico Kapanen uh, for the Stars team. I think it was 2005. He was, I think he was a a rookie in 2003. I really liked uh, Nico Kapanen. He was wearing number 39. Uh, And that's my like uh, birth year in reverse, like uh, 93. So yeah, I I, I like the guy. And then uh, Jus Jokinen, like I like the Finns. And when I saw the the Jokinen moves, he was doing the Forsberg. And I think when the shootout shootout was was the thing since since the lockout, he converted like the first nine or first 10 of his shootout, which is, which is, I think it's unheard of. Mm -hmm. It's uh, because uh, like your typical statistical rate, you convert maybe, if you are really good, you convert maybe one in a three, maybe one yeah. in a two. You're a legend if you convert every every other shootout. And if he he scored, I think first nine or first ten. That was that was great. I mean, that was that was wild. 
And, and you uh, mentioned all that, and like the 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 stars teams of the of the of the cap era, like the, the the new cap era from like 2005 on, those first couple of years, the stars were legends when it came to the shootouts. Like they were by far the best. When you had Turco, you mm-hmm. had UC Yokin, and you had Mike Madonna. Even to some extent, Yari Lettinen had some moves that. Listen, you, know, you had nobody also also Sergei, Sergei Zubo was underrated shootout yeah, scorer. That's true. So listen, uh, and I, I I think I heard Marty Turgo sp- spoke about it a little bit. That listen, I really have to make like one save <laughs> because those guys <laughs> those guys are are converting almost everything. So yeah, I mean that was that was great era. Like from two thousand five maybe up until two thousand and eight when they reached uh, Western Conference Finals. Uh, and I really loved also Brandon Morrow. He was he was he, he was great star. And uh, maybe from the back end, I I like Richard Matwichuk, but it was it was way back when when it was like post cup run or something like that. Also Darian Hatcher, yeah, the the, the former captain. Mm-hmm. And uh, Stefan Robida was was, was was a great was a great uh, let's say right-handed D that was and also Philip Boucher was underrated guy I I, I loved Philip Boucher num, former number 43 after w- way before Wild Nichushkin became we became, became a Dallas mm-hmm. star so yeah I like I like I liked him a lot so there was like a contingent of guys that I really liked from that era and uh, from the current ones uh, from the current team you cannot name Miro I mean I was following yeah. Miro Heiskan and uh, even during the draft year when and especially after the stars won the won the lottery because uh i have like four or five guys that could be available at that at that spot uh like uh casey middlestad or gabe Lardi, but he just stood out really he just stood out with his with his skating the skating is immense and i think at that time we had a hole at the left and the, at the left d how times change <laughs> and uh <laughs> Yeah, he was he was basically a lock. But uh, I have to say, the my my most my my, my favorite uh, guy at the team right now is Jake Ottinger because really I I like goalies, and uh, the 2017 draft was, I think the first that I really followed closely, like totally closely, and mainly because the stars were like lottery team, and I really wanted just two guys out of the first round. It was Heiskanen and Ottinger because Ottinger was really the, the the best goalie from from that year. And when I woke up in the morning and and I saw the like list of the picks in the first round, I was ecstatic, man. I ever, ever since that I knew that yeah, the stars uh, could be on the rise. And I didn't even know about Jason Robertson at that time, uh, who went thirty ninth. So yeah, I think we are on the verge uh, for the stars to become a really really great contender uh maybe this year not this year i i i think this year is a maybe a transitional year and uh b- before all the all the great guys like wyatt johnston's and logan stankovans and uh yeah i forgot maverick borks maverick and Burks. maybe even antonio stranges francesco arcuris artem grushnikovs like Grush- there are, i love grushnikov I yeah love I, grushnikov. I love him too man i mean there are some pieces coming who will be cheap for 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 some time at least, mm-hmm. and who who will play definitely maybe even this year like Wyatt Johnston could play this year definitely, and uh, that's why I'm I'm a bit I'm a bit still uh, like sad that they didn't they didn't extend John Klingberg because he would be like great mentor for these guys as well, uh, yeah. But what can you do? Mm-hmm. Well, that's really cool because uh, you know, and especially with with uh, with your I mean, you know, across the pond, all the way across in, in Europe. I think it's awesome that uh, that you're able to to follow the stars for so long and know all of these players. And like, I'm sure there's some stars fans who Richard Matmachuk, who the heck is that? Uh, <laughs> Philip Boucher, who the heck is that? A lot of people don't even know that he was an all star when the Dallas Stars had the all star game in 2007, scored over exactly. 20 goals. So, I mean, and. And he was a beast, man. He was so go and big. go and Google him for those who don't him don't know him. He's the guy the stars need right now. Like he's the type of the D that we need right now to have on the right side, like big body, throwing hits, also having mm-hmm. a bomb of a shot. I mean, he, he, he was great to watch. 
And and you know, I, the one name that I actually thought about. It's funny that you you, you mentioned him, but uh, I thought about maybe trying to get him to come on the show sometime. Is Stefan Robotov, because he's a guy who you know, especially he he was kind of the top one of the top two defensemen during the quote unquote bankruptcy era for the Stars. So and and he probably shouldn't have had to be expected to play that high of a role. But he did, and he filled it pretty well. He yeah, filled I mean, it very well. He was so, great. I mean, I would, if you have I would a chance love to, him to come on. If you have a chance to have him on, I mean, that would be great. And I forgot one crucial name uh, that I'm, I'm, I'm a bit of angry my, at, at myself that I forgot the name, and I have to say it, Stephen Jones. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, loved, I loved the guy ever since the trade that, that sent Patrick Sharp to the stars. Mm-hmm. Uh it's such a shame that what happened to him, but really the life is is more important than hockey. I mean, what are we even discussing here? We are discussing some bunch of guys uh, following a rubber on the sheet of ice, really. Mm-hmm. But Stephen Jones is uh, he was he he was great, and the project uh, that he went on after his curry was over the mental miles documentary. I I cannot wait when, when that is on because I know Jeff Dotes was was helping him or or, or was filming the documentary. Jeff Dodds, by the way, stars legend, and mm-hmm. uh, I can't wait. I cannot wait actually to see the thing how the, how he skated like through the U.S. And really, if he is listening, or uh, maybe I think I wrote him a message on on Twitter or somewhere else. I mean, he was really he's really inspiring person. Like to just to follow maybe off the ice, really, because he w- with all his troubles, uh, the way that he was like really sometimes considering even suicide. I mean, mm-hmm. it's crazy. Yeah. I'm so happy that he's he's uh, he's good right now. Uh, yeah, I miss him in the star jersey. Really, I I I, I would be, I would I would probably give my 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 brand new iPhone just to <laughs> just to <laughs> just to have him on the on the right side of Miro Heiskanen because that was the pairing that was supposed to happen that never did. And uh, yeah, Stephen Jones is is a, is a legend as well. Um, the what I thought was really cool about uh, Stephen Johns is that the the same time he was going through his uh, mental miles journey, uh, me and my family, and along with uh, you know my parents and all my siblings, we were actually going through some of the major uh, national parks here in the United States. So we were hitting like Yellowstone, and like we were going to uh, the Black Hills Mountains where Mount Rushmore is, and we went to Glacier National Park and. He was doing that around the same time we were traveling around. So he and I were actually in Yellowstone overlapping for about three or four days. So I was, I was, I, I was, you know, hoping and praying. I was like, maybe I can run into him or something. I never saw him, but uh, oh, that's, a, that's a shame. That's a, such a shame. I, I was following also on Instagram. So yeah, yeah. If 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 mm-hmm. you were with, if you were like to meet him, I mean that would be that would be great. I mean also like he received such an uh such, such an let's say uh, uh, attention from from all the media mm-hmm. but uh even even a few years after like it it still like creeps back in my head like what a, what a journey that was for him so let me ask you about uh not just some of your favorite dallas stars players but what are some of your favorite dallas stars moments uh I just i mean it could be current it could be like way back in the past what are some of your favorite memories that you have of the dallas stars yeah one one definitely sticks out and uh maybe i'll do a little bit of backstory for this as well Go for so it. that so so we'll keep it uh, more entertaining for those who, who who keep listening uh it was summer to no it's not it was not summer it was spring sorry it was spring 2019 and I was on a holiday in Nepal, and uh, stars were playing National Predators, and in, in 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 round one, uh, I think it's 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 not that far. It's pretty recent, and my favorite memory is yeah, again, the guy John Klingberg <laughs> <laughs> uh, scoring that OT winning goal because it was pretty funny. I was on the seven hour bus from, I think it was from Kathmandu to Pokhara or. Or, or, or I, I, I'm not sure right now, but it was really seven-hour drive uh, bus uh, in Nepal, uh, trying to watch the game because the time difference was like uh, it was maybe eight or nine uh, in the morning that uh, local, and uh, stars were playing like OT, and like my 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 data was 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 pretty bad, but I could still catch caught some glimpses, 
And uh, I, you know, when you are on holiday, you have like really relaxing time with with, with my wife. And uh, we didn't have a kid uh, back then, so it was just two of us. She was like scratching her head, like, "Why the hell am I watching an NHL <laughs> game in <a> Nepal?" <laughs> but when when uh, John Klingberg like scored the goal. Uh, I was, it was probably one of, it was probably the happiest time for me as a Stars fan because I, the team was really on, like on the app. I had uh, so much belief in Jim Montgomery, even though it was the horse shit uh, time where the, 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 the Tyler Sagan and Jamie Benn were called by, mm. I think, by, by Jim Lies, but basically by Tom Gallardi, let's be honest. And, yeah. uh, yeah, I, I had such a big hopes for the team. Uh, it was such a shame they went uh, out against St. Louis because uh, they were leading like 3-2 uh, in in the series. And that's, that was actually the game when I came back from holidays, when, when the Stars played game six against the Blues uh, in the round two. And the, if you I don't know if you remember this, but the, the, the game was 9 p.m. my time. So it was it was day game. Uh, in in Dallas, Texas, and I was like, man, if this happens and they go to the Western Conference Finals, they could beat San Jose definitely. Mm -hmm. And I was thinking, like, maybe this is the year. Maybe this is the year. Uh, disclaimer: It was not the year. <laughs> <laughs> we don't talk about the Game Seven against St. Louis. <laughs> we don't even talk about it. The, we don't even talk about the Game Six because, uh, yeah. Uh, anyways, the favorite memory was the John Klingberg's goal. There were some favorite moments, like the, the, the small ones, yeah, and uh, yeah, the bubble run. That was that, that that was great. I mean, watching the watching the Dennis Guriano score the winning goal against the Vegas in in, in game five, uh, that was great. Uh, and also like game one in Stanley Cup Finals when when Dallas won, I was like, man, like they are leading the series. I mean, they could do this, but uh, yeah, Tampa the whole Bay, guys, the Tampa Bay things. Yeah. Tampa Bay is Tampa Bay, and it it, it was their time and. I mean, they are they are the almost dynasty for a reason. But uh, yeah, the the bubble run definitely the Klingberg winning goal. And I, if I, I can if I, if, I, if I can mention one thing, it would be it would be against uh, again uh, St. Louis. It would be Game Six uh, in that 2016 playoff run. Uh, I was watching that game also on holiday because uh, I have a tendency to go on holiday in springtime. Uh, back in the back in the day, I think that was yeah, that was Thailand, and I was in Thailand. Also, the time difference is great for 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 a Thailand fan to to watch Stars game when they went when they won Game Six. I was again like, this is the year, this is the year, definitely. <laughs> but we definitely do not talk about the Game Seven against St. Louis in 2016 because that was yeah. that was like I had to turn it off. Really, it was I I don't turn off the game like easily, but I had to turn Game Seven off like after first period because it was like zero five and that yep. was brutal. Mm -hmm. Yep, I, I I remember that, and uh, I I actually to be honest with you, the differences between 2016 and then 2019, I would rather be getting blown out rather than be in overtime and there be a shred of hope, <laughs> if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does so, definitely. I mean, yeah. the, the thing about the 2016 is it changed the direction of the franchise and not necessarily for the for the good. And because, you know, the 2015-16 team, I think it was the best team in the NHL, really. They didn't have the goaltending. If they had Ben Bishop over there, they are winning the cup. Like 100%, they are winning the cup 2016. They were better than Detroit. They were better than San Jose. Uh, they just Couldn't need to... Safe. They they just couldn't get a safe, and then then I think the management and ownership pretty much uh, like overreact. They because they were like pushed around with the big big B big big D that Blues had at that time, mm -hmm. and they went and uh, trust the young guys, which is a good thing. But they trust obviously with the wrong guys uh, like Oleksiak and Nemeth. They they weren't ready, and uh, yeah, and also I, I think all the injuries, all the injuries that happened the next season like. Uh, cultivated in cultivated in really hiring Ken Hitchcock of all mm -hmm. names and totally changing the direction of the franchise. And if you look at the Colorado Avalanche right now, tell me who do they remind you of? Because to me, they remind me of 2016 stars. They do. They do. There's so a lot of that, similarities there. That's the issue I have. I think my opinion, 
and you can quote me on that. I think at, up until 2016, uh, it was Jim Neal's team. Maybe from 2017, like ownership, uh, like had their say a bit more that they probably should have. I I heard like Nick Kiprios talk about this in in Overdrive uh, mm -hmm. in TSN or something like that. That yeah. the stars ownership they are like the guy behind your back saying sign this guy, do not sell this guy. And I mean, yeah, it's your toy, it's your franchise. You can do whatever you want, but uh, you hired the guy for a reason, like the general manager. So yeah. let's just Let trust him. Do his him. job. Let yeah, him because do his job. If I I honestly think if if it were uh, for Jim Neal, I think John Klingberg would be a Dallas Stars right now. So that's, that, but that's just my opinion, really. So uh, let me ask you, I think this is probably a good segue. Uh, how do you feel about the stars going into next season? Because um, different star, most stars fans have been cautiously optimistic because there's, there's some things to be hopeful for. You know, we've, we've got a, a, a new young core, despite us not, you know, you know, drafting high in the top 10 or anything like that. We've got, uh, you got hints, you've got Robertson, you've got, uh, Miro, and you've also got Otter, so that's your new young core. Plus, you got the three younger guys coming along. You've got a new coach who could possibly get more out of uh, specifically Sagan and Ben, which is what we need more offensively out of them. And uh, most people are like that. But then you've got like Mullet Mike, who is just like, you should just always be optimistic about Dallas Stars hockey because it's Dallas Stars hockey. <laughs> and then you got. Uh, I won't mention them by name, but nobody here on on Stars fan stories who's come on. But there have been some who have you know, like confided in me that they're completely depressed about what next season is going to look like. So, I mean, where are you on that boat and how do you feel about the stars going into next season? Mm, that's a good question. Really? I was thinking about this. My first reaction would be, I don't know, but uh, after like having some thoughts about it, I'm cautiously optimistic really uh, for, for some reasons you mentioned that. Uh, we had we have great pieces. I mean, Rupe Hintz, Jason Robertson, even Joe Pavelski is yeah, yeah, is, yeah, is playing out, out, him, out, out of his out of his mind. Uh, but like, uh, I think Tyler Seguin would be would have a great bounce back year. Uh, Miro Heiskanen on the back end, uh, Jake Ottinger in net. Like you have this core of guys, but uh, they need to be supplemented with let's say depth pieces. And I'm not so sure about the depth pieces. So. I really see this as a transitional year, really. Uh, if we make playoffs, great, but I really don't expect them to like to make make noise. I think I I project them to make uh, just round one, uh, like like they did uh, like they did this year. And if they face Colorado or somebody like that, I project them to, like to be ousted in in round one. But that's not that's not a bad thing, really, because they are on the upswing and they should be, uh, because the the young pieces they are coming in. That should have you pretty excited, but not for this year, particularly. I see Dallas Stars being uh, contenders from 2024 onwards, really, because the, the the pieces and the drafting they did, it's it's pretty sublime. And uh, that's just one thing. I mean, they have already young core with Robertson, Haynes, uh, Ottinger, and Heiskanen. That is that could or that could deliver, and I could I could happily eat crow on this if they make I don't know Western Conference Finals or maybe, <laughs> hell even if they win Cup I would be I would be so happy. Well, uh, and I just I, don't forget about uh, Jacob Peterson too. I mean yeah I mean it, he wasn't really given the ice time this year, and he could be, I mean he could be a supplemental piece to the quote unquote core, but he could maybe argue his name into being a part of that big core uh if he shows up especially offensively this year because he showed up offensively last year with very limited uh minutes so absolutely i mean sorry I'm, I... just, I'm just really i'm a really big peterson uh peterson guy i love jacob peterson and there's a good reason to be because if you saw him in uh, in the world's uh, championship in for Sweden, I mean, yeah, I mean, he was fantastic. great, fantastic, yeah. So he's he's definitely a top six guy for me. I mean, uh, we can go through the depth chart, but uh, if I were to pick like one year when I think the stars could win Stanley Cup, uh, and definitely will, <laughs> if I say so, no, it will be twenty twenty five, uh, because. It will be probably the last year. It will be probably the last year of Jamie Ben, uh, mainly his big contract. But all those young guys would be would be ready by that mm -hmm. time. 
and they could still have leadership of of, of Ben and Sagin, and they will be on 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 the cheap contracts because you really need those cheap contracts in 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 cap era to be competitive. Right now, the stars have like uh, for my taste too many albatross contracts, uh, namely. Even I mean I'm sorry I love Essa Lindell but his contract is is not worth the price uh, even in, in a flat cap world if the cap was like 90 million or 95 it would be totally okay because it's not the let's it's not the AAV it's the percentage of the cap that really matters right now mm -hmm. and uh, also like Ryan Suter uh, right now Anton Hudobin maybe even Radek Faxa I think you have internal guys who can replace Radek Faxa like Ty Delandria. He could definitely do the job and maybe even better. Well, and, and uh, not to, I mean, if you really want to lean on a veteran, what about Luke Glendening? I mean, Luke Glendening is on a cheaper contract. I, I wouldn't say he's as good as Fox is, but he's still a guy who can play defense. He, 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 he's, he's on the penalty kill. He wins faceoffs. Yeah. You so. know, by advanced metrics, he's way better than Radek Faxa. Really? Uh, yeah. That I, I mean, yeah. I mean, Radek Faxa is one of the, one of the worst uh, guys in the NHL, basically, uh, for the last two or three years. He is totally replaceable, and the cap hit is really big for his for his production. I mean, I follow great guys on Twitter and analytics guys, and I also have have, have access to their to their stuff. Radek Faxa is 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 below replacement at this point, uh, and the AAV is just not right. And that's why I believe maybe some GM who values big body and values he, he's a shutdown center uh, would take a flyer on him. But uh, yeah, if I see the move that Radefaxa is out of Dallas, uh, that's the, for any price, basically. Uh, mm -hmm. not, 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 not the untouchables, or, or, yeah, but basically any price, I would be happy because it's addition by subtraction at this point. And also, I love the guy. He's Czech and I'm Slovak. I really love the guy. I follow him on Instagram personally. But if I look at this only the numbers perspective and really the, the, the on ice perspective, uh, Luke Glenglenin is, is your ideal fourth line center. And Radek Faxa, uh, yeah, he's a good. He was great. He had great 2016 playoffs, maybe the season after. I don't know if you remember that he scored a hat trick in, in, mm -hmm. in Vegas when, when the Stars won 3 0. I mean, if yep. if Faxa scores a hat trick next season, I, <laughs> that will be probably the biggest shocker of, of them all. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean there are really like quant quantitative reasons uh, for Radek Faxa not to be your best in in your best twelve forwards group next season. But he will be, and if he will be, uh, then I'm not so happy about it really. Well, uh, hopefully we won't have to wait to, for too long. We do have to wait for three months. I don't yeah. want to wait that long. That sucks. <laughs> but maybe just yeah, maybe the, it's just 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 one one thing. If I can may add, uh, go ahead. For 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 really be a contender, you really need to maximize your roster. You really need to maximize the potential that your roster has. And right now, there are things that are keeping the stars like below the water. And this, these are those guys. Like really, uh, maybe even Ryan Sutter is not that bad. Uh, analytically speaking, but he will regress and he has three years left on his deal. Mm -hmm. And uh, Jake Ottinger is on the upswing and Scott Wedgwood is, is, is really solid backup, really. Uh, I would be wondering if, because in, in this modern NHL, you need to have three guys. That's why they are probably intent on keeping Anton Hudobins. But at that price, it's just not worthy. I would rather have a third guy like I don't know Charlie Lindgren or or some or, or or somebody somebody totally maybe maybe out on out of the radar, and uh, to ha to to have a chance to win a Stanley Cup, like you really need to maximize all the pieces you have. Like look at Colorado, what is the worst contract that Colorado has? Like it's probably Eric Johnson, right? Mm -hmm. And he expires next season. Look at Tampa, what is the worst contract that Tampa has on their roster? I mean. Was it Ryan McDonough? Probably. It, 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 yeah. And, and he's he already out. He's already out of the Tampa. So look, you really need to be sometimes strict and sometimes like you need to cut players, you need to trade players in in order to stay competitive and to like to have a chance. Like 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 Billy Bean in Moneyball, you know, like he didn't, <laughs> he, he didn't uh, create personal relationship because you know his general manager. You cannot have that and. I think Jim Neal is a bit of leaning into his into his guys. 
I I also I like I, I love Jim Neal. I think he will be president of hockey hockey operations in a couple of years time. Maybe it's maybe now is the time really uh, because uh, he's a great guy. He, he was a great manager for for the Stars and uh, maybe somebody with a fresh set of eyes could could make this roster competitive sooner. That's but that's just my opinion. Uh, I know Saad Yusuf hinted in the Athletic that that Jim Neal. Even he himself hinted that he will uh, move the ladder up and become the probably the president of hockey operations. But then who will replace him? And that's that, 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 that's the that's the biggest question. I think they will focus in the next next year, maybe next two years. And uh, yeah, that will be big in the direction for the Dallas Stars franchise as well. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to see what uh, uh, what the Stars' future will look like. And I, I guess we'll just put it down now. According to your eye, 2025 Stanley Cup champion Dallas Stars. Book it, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, can you tell people, because uh, you also write a little bit, right? I just want to mention that before we close it out tonight. Uh, you do you do write a little bit, and then also you, you're most active on Twitter, correct? Yeah, I mean... I write a little bit. I started like two or three months ago, and it was really just my 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 way of like uh, I don't know, like dealing with stress from work. Like try 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 to think about the other stuff. And I like hockey, and I wanted to also train my English, my written English as well, like uh, for for other reasons. And I always felt like I have I have something to say about the stars hockey and, and maybe hockey in general. And I wasn't so opinionated on, on, on Twitter or anywhere else, but I tried to change that. It wasn't like the smooth, fluid uh, dance. Uh, but yeah, right now I really try to be active on Twitter, try to post my, my opinions, try to be opinionated. And uh, uh, I like it. I like, the, like, like, I like discussing with you today. I like discussing with other, other, other hockey fans. And I'm not journalist at all. I just write my own Substack. It has like I don't know, hmm. for this, for, it has like 40 subscribers. But uh, I, I, I'm happy doing it. I don't do it like for the numbers. I, I just doing it like when I see the article, and I'm just happy when I publish it. But uh, I follow like many and more talented guys. I if I can give them shout out right now, it would be probably David Castillo from from the D Magazine. I really like following his his work. I mean, he's great. Uh, formerly, it was Sean Shapiro. He, he was great in the Athletic, and I also like to follow Matt DeFranks uh, as well because he just burst burst contact out, out and out. Because he, I think he works in Sports Day News or something. I don't know what 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 the newspaper is called in 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 Dallas. Dallas Morning News. Dallas Morning News. Yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, I th- I like when the the people who work uh, or uncover the stars have the like the deeper knowledge of the team and that's why i like david castillo's work uh, for the d magazine and uh, sometimes i like when the writers are like not really talking the company line if you will but really uh have some let's say sharper edges to to cut somewhere where where somebody else wouldn't so yeah that that's that's also like my style i don't want to be overly let's say combative in any way shape or form but uh man you have your opinions and if you want to share them just just share them and i encourage i encourage everybody else to do so well thanks for uh joining us today uh you're right we really appreciate you doing this and uh i've had a lot of fun uh this the time has flown by we've been on here for over an hour and it's and it's flown by so uh i know for you it's getting late so uh we'll we'll go ahead and cut it out here and i know you're you'll just be like oh i could talk hockey for hours but that's true. Awesome I, I, I could, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I, I, I also, I also, I also like to sleep sometime. You know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, for those of you listening, we really appreciate uh, you know what you guys uh, do for our podcast. We appreciate we appreciate you guys listening. Go and check out uh, your eye on Twitter. I'll put his uh, his his handle in the description below. Uh, in the show notes or whether you're watching on YouTube, I'll make sure I'll do that. And you can follow him there. Make sure you go and check out his uh, sub stack too, where he does write a lot of good stuff. I highly recommend you, you go and uh, read his stuff. So along with uh, your eye, my name's Ryan. This has been Starcast to Marks, Stars Fan Stories, episode 10. We'll catch you guys on the flip side. You guys have a good evening. Thanks guys for listening. <laughs>